Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hello. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Hi. This is The Skating Lesson, where we are going to talk about all things that happened at the International de France. So if you are new here, please subscribe below, ring that bell for notifications, and smash that like button so we know that you like us because we are going to keep it real about the International de France. So this was... <laughs> I love when they're all calling it idea. They're like, oh, sorry to have missed you at IDF. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Also, I, I have a terrible sense. French accent, and I always wish that they let us take Spanish and French when I was... It was a it was a very difficult decision to make in sixth grade. I didn't know that... I know, it's a lot of pressure, Dave. People said, oh, well, Spanish will be more relevant. And, but then, I didn't know that... Chinese was, would have been relevant. We all should have learned Mandarin. No one told <laughs> me how elitist I was going to grow up to be when I was 12. Like, that was still they, in development. Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> oh! <laughs> should have done the French, should have done it. Yeah, should have done it. But a um, little bit of news to get into just before we uh, break into the event. Gabby Daleman withdrew from her second Grand Prix event. Uh, they haven't given, like, a full excuse yet. Um, Tristan... Yeah, because I'd be curious on that one where the decision came from. I think it's the right decision. Yeah. Um, but I would be interested to know who was kind of adult enough to really insist upon it. Whether it was her or her team or the Federation or whomever. Yeah. Um, Terzin Baeva withdrew. Remember, her mother had posted about the back injury. It seems like it's kind of serious. So it, um, you know, we don't know. There are always like whispers that come out of Samo 70. At this point, it looks like there are three injuries, I think, of varying degrees. Uh, the biggest one is that I think Kanishiba is uh, the one to kind of watch that. She's been a very MIA. She has posted on her Instagram, but it's always like other things. But it doesn't. It's <laughs> unclear if she's back to training or not yet. Um, there's that injury, Tarzan Bayeva, and then some speculation that Valieva is also injured. So there's always like it would really be a disappointment for that Junior Grand Prix final for it sure. It would be. You know, there still is time though to get back for the Grand Prix final. So I think that if you have like a injury now in a couple of weeks you could get back but i know that it's probably a lot of attention on uh, usashova to really up her game because she is the one where we have not seen quads from her though there's you know reports that she has been training quads we have not seen it on instagram yeah, she, it from... she's been struggling with just regular consistency quite yeah. frankly on this junior grand prix yeah and i think a adjusting to kind of the pressure and being expected to win rather than competing nationally and you know being in the conversation but not uh the winner so i think that's a big shift for her a big uh step up so it's it is interesting they have so many people vying for that top group there's veronica gilena who has done a quad toe and a quad sow cow uh both of which were fully rotated and really quite Amazing. I thought better than Akatieva's uh, jumps that we saw earlier in the summer. And there's also um, a Mark Lukin. I don't know how to say his name. Like Russia, it did, like the translation is Mark, but um, I wasn't sure if that was an error on my end. But he also had okay. a quad toe at 11. That was quite, actually, quite impressive. Um, other people, Amber Glenn got Cup of China. Yu Young got Cup of China after her... This is huge for Yu Young, yeah. Huge for Yu Young, also huge for Korea. We really see the um, the depth, I think, forming. It's been... Yu Young has made a step forward, High and Lee, and then Ensu has kind of... needs to get it together. She's competing, actually, at uh, the Asian Trophy this weekend and went back to her old short program, which was a magic short program. I actually liked the fan. I didn't think... That I, I don't think the, pro the uh, program had anything to do with why she wasn't succeeding so far this season. I thought the program had a lot of potential. It was just the jump, the, some squirrely landings that were sort of affecting that. Do you think that's comfort? Like, the season is not going well, so let's go back to something we're comfortable with that makes me feel... I think it's psychological. I don't think it's well, anything... But it's, it, yeah, it's got to be psychological, but in some ways you think maybe it's psychological how she goes into the jumps, and she could still change those entries I, I would think but yeah intriguing because i thought the fan choreography there was some potential there and it was the most beautiful dress i think that we had seen all season uh lisa mckinnon yeah. did it i just i imagine that she had so much success with that short program last season and that this season's been a struggle so maybe it's like getting your hair cut right like you feel a little bit right. more confident in that moment so maybe she feels 
more confident. She had some success with that program, but I don't think it will really help her develop. Yeah, again, I don't, think that had any, I don't think the program had anything to do with, with yeah. her tight landing. Yeah. Daniel. And another, oh, and, sorry, but you mentioned there's another Korean girl who's going to be at. Yeah, Choi uh, Yu Jin also got um, yeah. a couple of China. So there's more and more, they're becoming a real power with uh, some depth yeah. on the. Uh, the Grand Prix series. So they went from not it's having a game changer for Young Yu. Yeah. For her to, if she does well and medals at another event, like this could be some real momentum swinging her way. It's just interesting because it seems like the uh, the results and the standings and the powers are kind of shifting. And it seems like Japan has been in kind of a fluid period mm -hmm. where I would say that the fall hasn't been their best. I don't think that means that their skaters won't do well at the end of the season, but it seems like they're not quite as dominant on the ladies front right now but right. maybe i think with some of the skaters will have had sort of slower start of the season will be kind of strong at world so it's kind of fluid right. every there are more people becoming relevant but other than just right Russia, that's interesting to watch um so well let's start about someone who is very relevant is aliona kostronaya she is someone jonathan that let me tell her skating fans everywhere love, especially in North America. She may be, I don't know, the white people love her like Jennifer Aniston. I don't know, like she is something <laughs> in skating that I have gotten more messages about this young lady. Okay, so let's talk about it for two seconds because back when we were like tracking all these juniors however many years ago, I mean, this was 2017 or yeah. 16. Yeah, and that short when, program, you loved it. But I first really glommed on to her skating and you really went for Anna Sherbakova skating. You were like, yeah. mark my words, Anna Sherbakova is the one because then of course we were missing her for a while because it was, it was a broken leg, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but you kept saying, wait, wait, wait. Here comes Anna Sherbakova. So now having seen sort of all three of these quad mm -hmm. babies, or I mean, you know what I'm saying, the juniors turn seniors, what's your assessment of the three? I happen to like Kostanaya the most, and she is, I believe, the easiest to understand in a skating skills standpoint. Um, things just go a little bit slower for her, and so I think it is the most nostalgic skating. Um, Positions are held a little bit longer, and it seems to transcend IJS choreography. It somehow, even though it is just as cluttered, seems less cluttered. Um, but I have to say, Anna does really listen to her music. I don't think something is as like deep and earthy as Costa and I is skating, but it's very lovely. And truth about, of course, there's the marvel of the physicality only, in my opinion. She's I, the athlete. She's yeah. the real athlete of the group. She's like a rare yeah. athletic specimen that's also extremely mm -hmm. impressive. But from a skater point of view, I'm less impressed. But I'm most impressed with her athletically. Um, the yeah. body has like more lean muscle mass than I think we've ever seen in a skater before. And it's actually very fascinating yeah. to watch her jump technique, not her skating skills, though. But, and that's something that's actually discussed quite openly in the ring in Russia, but that we hear, but not, people get very bent out of shape, out of sorts. Well, it was they, very interesting, Dave. Someone was like, how could you say um, Trusova doesn't have skating skills? Look at this clip. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, posted. and it was awful. Did you see my response? <laughs> but I thought the clip you're showing is the exact is the epitome of what we're talking about, you know, like all of the short crossovers and all of this sort of stuff. It's not to take away from her technical prowess, but I, I think the way the numbers are skewed, if she delivers the jump content, it doesn't matter about the PCS because it will be pretty unbeatable, I think, by world. Well, I, I have to say the judges are human and there's a lot of, like, excitement and momentum about Kostanaya. That even though Trusova has the quads, I feel that there's a little magic around Kostunaya that, yeah. and people are human and skating. And I think that when you give them a Terry students who can do the jumps and be consistent, but also have a little bit more in the skating skills and you give some, you present someone that has that. I think that they may differentiate slightly more to Costa Naya. I don't know how big the Delta will be over Tusova by that point, but I could see even the ISU. And I think by that point, I would think um, the vice president, um, 
Mr. Mathematician, a Lacernic. I think that, you know, there are subtle messages that I think get sent from time to time of what people are looking for, and I could see that it benefiting Kosternaya because she's someone that's kind of beloved by everyone, right? Like, and so, not denying you technical content. No. I don't know it's not a quad, but... She, but reward she, that yeah. program component score, uh, I think, is what... Because if Trusifa does win over the other women there will be a lot of criticism and backlash of those skating skills. And I know that the Russians don't want to hear it all the time, but that will be something that will yeah. be discussed. Um, I still think that Sherbakova has um, a little bit of a relation. When she's given good music, there's like a little bit of a relation to the music, especially with her upper body and her neck, where she just responds to it so well. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is not always from the blade down but there's something to her that's like the sasha cohen to the ankle and then she's got a little sickle feet but there's a little bit of like something special there and i love coaster naya too but i like they're my two favorite uh for different reasons but i think that sherbakova has something and she has an ability to obviously turn it on under pressure as coaster naya did here too interesting they both had awful practices at their first Grand Prix, which I think is quite normal. Uh, I remember at one of my, I remember having a bad first practice at a competition. Um, I think the biggest thing here was that um, Coaster Naya showed so much emotion and that there was so much uh, buzz about her that and everyone loves her so much that she is so beloved that the shots of her crying did um, make it around. I mean, she had a really rough practice and it was so funny because the fans showed that like she retied her skates which is something that any skater does to just kind of like reset and then automatically the fans were going maybe it was the skates maybe it was just the sk and it was like that why does it have to be something it could just be a shitty practice you know what i mean the interesting yeah. thing though is she did deliver <coughs> a little tighter triple axles here yeah then we saw at the beat at, the, at her senior b um you know anna did struggle in the short program still so where where she really got it together by the long, which I think was very encouraging. Um, but Coach and I did. Ah! <laughs> I talk about crying in a competition. Jonathan, she almost didn't take the ice, Miss Dorothy, at that world. Okay. <laughs> As someone who had a bad warm up with the double axle at the Olympics and like to get a little emotional, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it helps. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, it's Dorothy. It's Dorothy. Here's to Dorothy. Okay. But as someone else who sometimes was known for her axles. Do you really think that Coaster Naya's axles were around in that free skate? You saw them, oh. I saw them. The judge, the caller gave it to her, but honey. That... They were more around, they were more around than the short. But now, did you, I don't Jonathan, think she's one of those types of axles though normally, right? In the past she is fully rotated. The pattern is a little boxy and she goes a little far yeah. out. Um, and it's not like a big fix, like she needs to point the toe, like it's right there, but that was the error that she was kind of making in practice with it too, so at least it was consistent, and it was consistent with the second axle that she did in Finlandia. Okay. Um, okay. It's not because a the first big one is pretty good. She was because yeah. we've seen them do like more rise until she really hit at the Olympics. They were kind of always going to be that way, and I, I don't know her that the first axle. are always going to be. Her, if you watch the replay on the ISU feed, like her first axle in the long was worse than the second one. But she did pull okay. off the double toe from it. Yeah. It's not that I, like, I think that she can clean up that jump. It's just obviously when so, it's new. What's interesting is that she wasn't in the top group with the other girls over the summer. And that's why she was missing with a lot of the pictures when she was injured. And Kira Corpy was talking about this a lot. The Corollis have done it. If someone was injured, they wouldn't always... They're not going to put their attention on you. And this is a little bit like controversial, as Kira Corby was saying, but it, I think, is effective for many people is that when someone is injured and then not delivering the content that they need, a lot of times the coaches will ignore you until you start performing. So like that, she willed herself because to get that Because you lose your work axle. until you're back at that level. She willed yeah. herself to get that triple axel, and I think you're seeing that kind of inner strength come out of her. Okay. All this season. So you could say whether it's positive or negative, it's certainly effective because right. 
is look at how she is performing now. Like, um, right. and you know, the ethics of that is a not only different combination conversation, but she is certainly, uh, Delivering. Okay, so, so let's let's just go there for a moment. So you know a lot about the psychology of coaches and coaching. So we've talked about the Carolis would do that yeah. kind of thing. It's clear that maybe Atiri was doing that same kind of thing. What about somebody like Suzanne in the gymnastics world? If people on her team were injured, would you find she would have motivated that way or a different way? Okay, so Suzanne's like a little different because like that's a team sport, but she will use each athlete to get them invested in different ways. So there was a girl that was, had broken her foot and was at the Olympics, but they really needed her to be more of a team member and engaged because she was becoming more of a leader and she was a little bit immature. So they made her like coach balance beam when she broke her foot to like okay. be engaged. Right? And she, she's a little like, different with like how she treats each person but she will like figure out how to get each person going like what's going to motivate them and then she also has a huge theory that success and momentum is contagious so that when someone like Costa Naya gets the first win at Finlandia they're going to want to crawl to get the second win on the Grand Prix and that there's like something yeah. that is going to pull out of them because when you get that success, you don't want to go backwards. You want to be that person. And she really believes that when you start okay. to get the ball rolling, the people... It like Wait, Because would... I'm even thinking about when you were talking to Michelle about um, her injury in the time off in 97, 98, that Frank and then Lori had her doing all these mental run-throughs of the yes. program. And she was able to achieve all of this work. And then I compare that to what we're talking about with Costa Naya or this kind of approach where you're being it sounds to me like being punished for being injured. I don't know that it's like being, I think this is when she was back on the ice, right? And like not okay. getting it back together because one of the things is that when you are an athlete and you lose confidence, like there is that kind of self pitying thing that goes on. Like how okay. quickly you get back, I think mm -hmm. is sometimes there are obviously physical limitations, but there's also psychological confidence consistency how quickly you're going to get it all back um okay to be prepared and ready to go because usually imagine if you used to having like a full season right, right. and we even saw with michelle remember she wasn't practicing super well before she went to the nationals in 98 right. and then she turned it on when she was there and perhaps right. that's all the run-throughs and everything and then she was actually delivering jumps that season that were better than she had done in the years previous so there is something to all to of it. this, yeah. right? So, yeah. and, and the innate timing of that. I was not surprised that Costa Naya did, uh, was the best here. I think that her music could be better for the free. Um, I agree. But I do like the program. It's nice, but we need to talk about her components, Jonathan, because... Yeah, yeah tell me. This ju The judges are mixed, and I, I really think that part of this is that she was injured last year during Junior Worlds. So she's kind of been out of the conversation, right? And though she won the Junior Grand Prix final last season, she hasn't, she doesn't have Trusova's record of like the two Junior World titles back to back coming in with the quads. We didn't know if she was gonna do the triple axel and we didn't see a lot of her over the spring summer months. So I imagine that the judges didn't really know what to do with her. And you never know if every judge is watching YouTube and On Instagram board, yeah. and like how right. engaged each judge is because you're seeing some judges went nine, some judges went eight for her. But I think that hers are ones that are going to go up, but the reputation is criminal here. So she got a 7107 and it, she went up significantly from the short to the free, which I think is how this happen. works because yeah. Look, Finland was Especially not... Especially because she was early. She was early, too. Yeah, so and Finland... Aren't getting... Finland was the afterthought of Senior B events. We had already seen Hanyu. We had already seen uh, Medvedeva. We had seen Zagidova Japan Open. It was kind of the last one to get through, and it was a late one. So I don't think that people have had a long time to kind of 
judges to set in her mind how they feel about her. I but, guess. I thought there was enough buzz about her triple axles and stuff. There, I though, think but. with the super fans there was, but with the people that yeah. are putting down the marks that have to determine your fate, I don't know that they... Are trust. always super fans. Or, yeah, always super fans, friends. or we knew that she had that triple axel for almost two years before she did it, so I think there was right. some doubt, okay. right? Like, okay. we see these 11-year-olds do the quads. Like, right. Things move fast, right? Okay. Um, but look, Zagitova in that free skate, which was a rack, which was a complete mess, she got, and she got generous calls on that loop that only got one carrot when it should have had two in the free. She got 72.97 points, Jonathan. 72.97 yeah. over Mariah Bell. over And that... Is Dorothy getting her Olympic champion points, her world champion points? <laughs> <laughs> okay. As someone who sure, competed here's in another the, one for Dorothy. As someone mm-hmm. who competed in the figures era, Dorothy would like to talk to you about reputation points and why you have Carlo right. Fossi by the boards. Okay. Right. It's true. This was a criminal. I mean, she did not. Interpretation no. of music, 9.29. Really? Really? Yeah, but as we know, they're just giving one blanket score. Like, because did they really vary in between any of the categories, or were they just kind of all set? Jonathan, when you saw Zagitova's performance, seeing how the deterioration... Well, okay, she, so first off... Physically, I, she looks well, different than she did at the first event. Like, I don't know if she's yeah. been injured or what, but we also know yeah. that Zagitova has shows lined up in December and shows in February. Now, we've talked about this before. People got all hysterics. I would like you to talk to Dorothy, Christy, and Katya. <laughs> They're um, reproducing out there. <laughs> three queens. Wait, who's in the black? Christy Yamaguchi. Two-time oh, world champion. Four-time world professional champion. Okay. Someone who eventually had to make the hard choice and dump Rudy Galindo. I would like you to tell Christy what you see happening with Zagitova's future this season. Do you, Jonathan, what do you think will... I, I think she was going to be... I think if she were to compete at Russian Nationals, she would be fourth. Do you think that... Do you think that Zagitova will finish the entire season if one of the top three girls are not injured? Or are they just keeping her around as a spare before launching a professional career? Yeah, I guess the question is... I think it's clear to those who know that she is not going to make the world team. So do you let her make one final Grand Prix final or something? I'm not quite sure if they're looking for one more feather in the cap. I think Japan uh, Open because, was like the last feather and that then they were just seeing what's going to happen. But she knows. Yeah, I think it's clear because who's she? I'm sorry to call you on this. Who is she up against in her next Grand Prix assignment? Costa Naya. So I can't help but feel like unless... Also very weird to the ISU with these matchups, how this was almost the same field as Skate America and some of the events was very strange. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, with the same results. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've got to pull Christy's dress down. Oh my goodness. Christy, I'm so <laughs> sorry. My say <essay>, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but I have to say, looking at Zagitova, looking at the points, looking at the momentum of... It is like thoroughbred racing and their last year's ponies. I mean, I really think Zagitova will have a wonderful career, and I hope that they can do some sort of professional competitions. And it, it totally made sense that she stayed last um, season, got that world title. But remember, the Amazing. only thing... I know that the fans want to hold out hope for that quad flip that we saw in a harness once upon a time. No. But like no. Racy Gold's um, skated sectionals... I think it's about as likely as that quad flip in, in the harness. Right. Like, I... Right. Come on. Is and it... you know what? If she was actually delivering her top technical game, she might kind of still be in the conversation, but she's not doing that right now. So, um, I, I think it's tough. I don't I'll see this happening. i think about... She do you got... think, what do you think? If she made the final and Elisabetta Enrica did... I, think, where, I mean... I think fifth. Sixth, perhaps, based on what we Fifth or sixth, yeah. Just so because I, I she's always had a lot of twerk in her body and how she does that Lutz, 
and it's become such a struggle, and both of them were under here. And they even gave her the exclamation point on the Lutz edge. The toe, right. I mean, the judges are sent a clear message here. They did what they could. Look, they were giving her plus fours where they could on spins. Right. It's not that she's a bad, it's just... The yeah, it's, time. I mean, and if she were representing a different country, this would be a totally different story. I and think. she got the silver here, but honestly, I think that if she did not have her reputation of three huge titles behind her, that she would have, and more beyond that, that she would have won the bronze here. But, but, but now, Bell. having said that, like, okay, you've seen Mariah live and Zagita. Have you seen Zagita Bell live? No. I don't think okay, I saw I saw Zagita live actually at this event in 2017. I mean, I've seen Mariah skate certainly a lot, and yeah, yeah, and Mariah is lovely. But I will say there is an energy to Zagita's uh, skating live in a, a speed and like an ice coverage thing. But not but I don't know. Not when you're doing the kind of mistakes that she did here. You know that fair the enough. Spell. If that's what you're if you're fairly judging, yeah. But I could see the speed and the power alone getting some judges confused and giving her higher marks than Mariah but I, I yes I <laughs> gotcha listen gotcha listen I'm sorry about your news but <laughs> excuse me do you think that I belong below Caitlin Weaver at an event I think Caitlin Weaver with her barrel chested partner do you think that Katya Gordieva who gave you Renee Roca choreography realness deserved to ever lose a televised skating competition you know what? I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> All right. <And> just, <laughs> I haven't even watched. I just know the result. Horrifying. Canada couldn't. Could it, they couldn't could help themselves. They forgot that Weaver was from Texas. You know that. You know how Canadians yeah. can be. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what. And you know how they feel about Russians. So they yeah, just exactly. yeah. If they couldn't have Katya talk about the dead husband, they were just done with it. Okay. They just. They just should have skated to Moulin Rouge and then. They should have skated to Moulin Rouge, okay? Yeah. Because then even when you're second in the final program, you can still win. <laughs> Listen. That's just me being funny. That's just me Do being Do they deserve silly. to be second, DDA? Okay. <laughs> I love the French, and we'll get to them, okay? Okay. They were as big as, as much of the French as they could be this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Canadians keep doing that thing, Jonathan. Whenever they thing, feel Canadian. superiority... I always, like, if a Canadian does well, like, like when Doug Haw will text when Piper beats Hubble. Now, I've never seen Doug Haw accused of understanding ice dance, but he'll tell you, oh, Wilson and McCall were amazing. <laughs> they deserve the gold. But... Yeah. Just like that girl at the U.S. Open. <laughs> okay. But, like, if they don't like the French when they're competing or Madison Chalk, like, my friend Jeff, like, he would... And he doesn't even realize that he will do it. But he will always, like any time, they feel Canadian superiority. They cannot help themselves. But it's it's you're like whoa, it's over. It's, it's like Russians over. falling in line behind power. Like it's just yeah. who they are. You know, yeah. like listen, <laughs> they can't help themselves. It's that real tribe instinct in some people. Canadians and Russians not so different. Okay, <laughs> I think I think it happens to Americans. It just doesn't happen to me. Well, we're more about rivalries, and we cannot agree on anything. Oh, yeah. Like, I actually want to get to know the individual and who, what sass is what, you know? It's just, it's not that people don't, it's just it's more splintered. The fanaticism is separate. Yes. Right? Yes. It's not mm -hmm. like one nation under Justin yes, Thoreau. Yes, exactly. Because you know, like, I think there's all of these arguments actually among these three Russian girls. Anna, Trusova, and Kostyanaya. I think it probably in, it invokes the same thing. Opera does it all the time. I saw someone get punched over an argument about Maria Callas, and I thought... They wow. deserve to get punched about <laughs> Maria Callas. Yeah, I love Maria. Do you realize what an ugly man Maria Callas had to have an affair, I mean, to be lovers with? With I mean, Onassis? Yeah, I mean, disgusting. come on Disgusting, okay? Yeah, but she did it. She played to win. She did it. I watched <laughs> that whole documentary where she... She talked about it. She was a grand diva, all right? She is amazing. She is amazing. But yeah, Zagitova, I don't feel that grand diva persona from. I, I feel that she... Because Janaya was the one with the air of swag about her. And I have to say, for a smaller venue like Grenoble is, the audience energy was through the roof. Like, really snaps to that crowd. It was 
they were so enthusiastic and anytime someone fell they almost kept louder mm-hmm. it could not have been greater I loved that how do we feel about Mariah Bell so I feel like this was the competition of her life she has never mm-hmm. skated better she yeah. I think was performing her jumps the- were so around she looks so well trained that last it was funny because I wanted to Phil Hirsch texted something or tweeted something and he said about how Mariah Bell's jump at the, the triple lutz at the end of her program was as good as the jump to start. And I was like, well, actually, that jump was the one jump that she cheated. If ever but, there was a question, it was just that one. And I <laughs> wanted to, like, oh. I wanted to, like, give Phil that nod. And I'm like, you did not see the end of rotation. Like, but yeah. I wanted yeah. to like it. I wanted to. Yeah. I can't help being the bitch. Okay? I can't <laughs> help it. All right? You can buy it, honestly. Yeah. Saw it, okay. Dorothy gets it. Dorothy gets. Dorothy gets it. it. Here's for Dorothy. Okay. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. You know who else gets it? Mama Ty. Mama. Oh my god. I knew she would, but did you see Mr. Debonair, Richard Dwyer himself? We need to. You posted missing that axel and then doing it again. God, I'm eighty-three years old doing that axel. He could break a hip. He could like. (laughs) Eight and any years months. old? Like, yeah. First of all, my grandfather wasn't even alive at 83. They were both diabetic and large. Like, okay. come on. He looks good. He looks hot. 83. Yeah, like, has a nice smile. Still has a swagger about him. I like to imagine that all those women that like, you know, when they skate around him, like JoJo, I hope they're hitting on him. All right? I just yeah, hope. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope he's getting some showgirl tail. Okay? Like, There's a I, reason Debonair is in the title. I'm just, all right? Like, I... Yeah. He is kind of a sexy older man, a ha- man of a certain age, okay? Yes, yes. Does anyone three. else feel that? <laughs> if you can do an axle at 83, yes, okay? And he had a pretty fierce cantilever, didn't he? He's pretty fierce, okay? Richard Dwyer <laughs> is pretty fierce, all right? Okay. Just saying, all right? I don't know. This is... Also, I feel like Mariah Bell is really using the fact that she is the star of the rink now. Like, when Nathan's at school, who's Raphael paying attention to? He has some young she, kids. She has owned something. She has stepped into a leading role a little bit more, which is sort of where the disconnect was. Because before, when you would see Mariah, she was this lovely girl, and she'd do pretty good jumps, and it never really landed, the whole thing. But, but there's so much kind of grace and about... performance quality. I wish she didn't wear the yeah. Adaya boots, because I do think that they inherently... Uh, freeze the ankle a little bit and skating a lot of the flexibility through the ankle helps create the edges and some of the more of the beautiful pictures. But Mariah Bell, as sweet as she is, twice now we have seen that she is not like the grittiest girl who's just like clawing for success. She comes from a very... um, financially stable family. Like she, she doesn't like have that same sort of like, you know, we mortgage the house 75 times for skating, like you need to feed all of us type situation. The, but if you tick her off, she will come back roaring. And it first happened when she first wanted to move to Raphael. She was told by her previous coach that he would not be interested in her. And that next season is when she first got to the world championships and did the East of Eden program and made herself into a star. And it's like, uh, I'll show you type situation. Right. Now, after the whole Ensu situation and everything that happened last year, look at what has come out of this girl. Look at how she has turned that situation and used it, like probably <laughs> had some ugly cries and turned around and said, I will come and show everyone and look at where she is and look at where Ensu is this season. And I think that that tells yeah. you everything you need to know about that situation, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And who was coming from a place of? I just think that you. It shows a lot about the motivation for the next season. Because if someone did that to me, I would want to kick their behind so badly on the ice. But she you, did the next day. You know what I mean? She right. But, ahead of her. That was something in and of but itself. But that's one of those things where it's like, do you ever get mad at someone and you're like, one day. I will beat you. <laughs> like, it will not be right. I'll show you. I'll I will show you. Show you, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that Mariah Bell, deep inside her, does have that. Like, she, I do believe this season will probably beat Brady at Nationals. 
which a lot of people were not so sure if that could happen because she has not always been the grittiest competitor. But these jumps were a different kind of secure than I'm used to from her. And I, she looks toned in a different way. Like maybe she's training the jumps differently or something and she's getting a bit more height. She's getting a bit more So remember, Raf does that group teaching method and I imagine she's performing better. He is giving her more attention that this whole situation is building with that momentum. And I would expect her to do well. And then it becomes, how do you judge her against Alyssa Liu at nationals? And that's a whole other right. discussion for later in the season that I think if Alyssa right. Liu doesn't win the junior grand prix final, I don't think that she's guaranteed to win nationals, nor do I think right. that she should be, you know, right. just, I don't think that they should right. just hand her the components. Cause I don't think that that's going to help her development right. as a skater. Nor do I think she should really be in the senior national event, but that's a whole other, you know, situation. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, just do what Russia does for a while because it seems... I don't good. know. They, they had her <laughs> performing in the exhibition at Skate America, listing her as the junior, junior ladies as if there was a competition there. So, right. yeah. Now, how about Calry? So this is it. We've seen her uh, at Vegas. She does have power. I- interesting is that I think a lot of people... You know, we're very shocked that she was not ahead of Brady. Although seeing it live and seeing the quality, the difference in the spins and some, and some of the speed in person in the short, I did feel that it actually was justified. And it was shocking to me to sit there and feel that Cowrie wouldn't go. Because when Cowrie skated to Center Ice, I think I said to Bill, who's sitting next to me, I said, oh, well, I think she'll move into the lead, right? And then watching her against Brady, I was like, I don't think this is good enough. And it was just a subtle difference in energy and in speed and in fluidity. I th- there's something, ex- to me, there's something exciting about Cowrie, even, even live at Skate America. Mm-hmm. There's a speed that's a little bit different and she's lower in the ice. So she like comes at you with this huge force of energy. Yeah. And you just think this is power and speed, but she hurls herself into those jumps as well. And sometimes it creates a huge, exciting moment, like even the opening double axle in the free, and she like is on that ride out forever and going a million miles an hour. But it's a little wild and sloppy then also compared to Brady's often more precision-based look, I think. Yeah, and Calvary does go with the kind of wild and sloppy with her choreography. Like they make it work, right? Like they have, I think the programs are brilliant packaging. They are brilliant. I don't love like some of the positions are not aesthetic. Like her tilt kind of fan spiral is really hard to love. Um, even though she is such an engaging personality, when you see her after the program before the, she's someone that's rude for her. her. Yeah. There's something yeah, just like even though there's a phone ringing at the beginning of her program, which would be an automatic disqualification for me liking you, but I'm still rooting for but her. But what she has that, we don't know who Brady Tunnell really is, and I just think that she may not be as extroverted and we just don't know her in the same way, is that Cowrie gets into, she seems like there's an authenticity to her programs and her music, and oh, she's not her fighting her personality she shines. Yeah. yeah. She's not showing you a look. She's just being. Even, like, I feel like, you know, we all have different aspects of our personality, and I feel like the piano brought, like, the softer, lyrical side of her, and this has, like, that edgy, like, feisty side of her that's kind of fun that we see in The Matrix. She hits a nice, happy medium in the short program. Yeah. But they are telling her the jumps. She got off to a really slow start this summer. I don't know what happened, because she looked good earlier in the summer, but then... You know, she's got it getting a Lutz edge. She's getting carrots. You know, the loop, double toe. The triple loop, double toe, you could see. Uh, the triple loop at the end of the program. The triple sow early in the program. She's going to need to clean them up. And she's. I think that she probably will need a triple axle to be relevant because she's falling behind. Like, she's and really... Do you see that being possible for her? I don't know that I see that. She needs either a, she needs something to pull like it Like Wakaba. Out. Wakaba is the one who could one day yeah, pull back she, out at Triple Axel. But I don't I see worry about Wakaba it. because but, I love Wakaba skating, but she's had 99 problems. And it's like, when yeah. do you get the momentum? Because skating, yeah. you can't just, you can get the content you had before, but when are you going to make the improvements? And it just seems right. like with Wakaba, there's not ever a long enough window 
to train and then improve. And we right. see her come to these events and she's struggling to get back to a level while these other girls are just moving ahead at light speed. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think that Kaori can do it, but obviously not making the Grand Prix final is going to hurt <coughs> her reputation. Yeah. Um, I think that she's certainly capable of being in the top six at the World Championships. I don't think that... Uh, and I think that this will probably... Even, I was trying to think her. about this. Even if she hadn't missed the flip in the short here... Mm-hmm. Even if she had gotten full credit with plus two each, she still would have been fourth. I know. Right. She has to find I mean, something in herself and in her skating that's going to make her really stand out. Yeah. She has speed and power more so than other competitors. But I do and she think... has the vehicle in those programs. But yes, if she added a triple axel, it would change everything. I, I mean, the, she's, she's going to need it. Like they're, She's going yeah. to need it to... Compete and we've not even heard rumblings of her trying, have we? You know, she was training it at that... I think camp, I know that she's trained it before. I don't know how close it is, but she needs something. Um, when all the Japanese... Girls. Maybe it's not until next season. And this season means nothing if she makes it to the Olympics and is doing consistent triple axles or a quad... Right? Like this season, who cares? I do think that she's one of the best in Japan, but she needs to step it up. Like that's yeah. just... And I think she's someone that seems to really enjoy skating and she always goes out and really fights you can tell on the ice that she really gives it uh when she's out there and does not give up so she has a positive energy when she's skating so yeah i but it's not enough the points yeah you know because the components are not enough the other's not enough also someone who really needs to get it together is star andrews she is just middling this talent she's, again yeah again. middling is the right word she's about to just like Ball off languish now. away yeah. in obscurity because there's no reason to talk about her. And like, do they, I'm really confused because Derek went to Stanford, Jonathan. Like he helped Adam at the Olympics. Like there's a part of Derek that is sophisticated. There's another- That must part, get, yeah. And I know that he's like friends with Tara and that's, you know, Judge McCall, but it just seems like a little strange that he would let her do Salome considering that that is going to be an eye roll, especially domestically, that she is skating. And it just puts like a weird taste in your mouth. Like you really, you thought that Well, and it's Hunter's not because she had to do it. No. Do you know what I mean? She like, can do a million it, interesting things, right? But Yeah, it just seems like, it's not like she's so connected to this music or material, or they had such a great program idea that they didn't care and had to do it anyway. It really does just seem... And the Assigned. effort in it's her skating, the, the attention to the detail and the effort seems to be going by the wayside. So I don't know if yeah. they're no longer believing it as much, but again, it seems like it's momentum going in the other direction. So that's, yeah. it's upsetting because she has inherently, when she does her jumps, you can see a talent there. It's kind of like with Wakaba, you could see that she should be one of the best skaters right. in the, the world. The goods are there. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, I don't know, like Not there's... Fine. That double axle, triple lots under, double loop. <laughs> uh, but double even axle, this is still a, I mean, I know we had a real moment with her at Skate America in that short, but when they were at their version of their test skates for mm-hmm. Japan, I mean, this is still crazy improvement. I didn't even yeah. think this was possible for her, but it's clear something's gone awry. Something, you know, it's just the yeah. last couple of seasons, so... And Yuna Shirewa, you know, had a rough go as well. That was, but, that was very tough. That was a tough one. Well, let's speak about rough performances because I think there's... I think we just need to talk about Shoma because there's... He's one oh of the most God. beloved skaters. There's something about his energy, about his performance quality, the musicality. Even in, even in that short program, Dave, which was clearly a mess, I was like, I'm having an amazing time. I am obsessed with this. I still think this is the best thing I've seen all season. And it was a hot mess. Like, I was watching one of my favorite skaters implode, yeah. and I was like, God, isn't he great? I think the program just is so incredible. I have to say that, like, when he is, even during the David Wilson Free to the Robin song, when he was falling all over the ice, <laughs> looking like he was going to hurt himself, he was still giving emotion and performance of like little yes. nuances in his ability to skate 
That is the best of the three, the big three. Something that could have been heartbreaking. I it was still heartbreaking, but it was still beautiful at the yeah. same time. I didn't understand how he was still able to emote and not even shut down. He used the program to like exude his frustrations. It was something quite remarkable, but I have to tell you, seemingly very unsafe. This is this is more than Anna Pogorelia, who just would let herself tumble out. The, clearly, some, the axis is off. Something is very, very wrong. To even be attempting these things seemed very dangerous at this well, point. Well, it seems like that part of him is trying to will this to happen. And it's kind of like with Gracie where they can't, they're such fighters, they cannot turn off the... Yeah, they're the not office. popping. They're not, not popping, popping. And they're not going to go for less than what they think is the content that they should be doing. Even when they shouldn't be doing it, it's not consistent enough. Yeah. What's shocking to me is how much better he looked a couple of weeks ago, and how quick the deterioration was. That there was something really off here, and I think that a lot of this is like psychological. He didn't look as as fit here as he has in the past. You could just tell in the training, um, especially in the free, and it was, and then the just the rotation wasn't even there. The tilt. I mean. The, these were some no, really... it was so off axis. Mm -hmm. I mean, and some of these landings were scary and some of the takeoffs were scary. I don't know. It was very much. And then they would show the team delegates watching him, but then no one was sitting with him. And surely the delegate could have sat with him. Yeah, I don't think I don't it was know something if they very. It seems very unsteady. I know he's supposed to work with Bombi oh. else for a little bit and they're going to announce what he's going to do for a coach. But it seems like they don't know. I asked Alex Arashev. He has worked with Shoma in the past, in the summers. He hasn't been approached uh, to work with him. I actually think that... I tend to Maybe think that, that Shoma does well with like a maternal figure, it seems. Perhaps that Machiko Yamada really was that for him. I know that he had the other assistant who would travel with him to the events, but she's really the coach there that raises uh, these champions. And I just... Someone also said that she had cancer a couple years ago and that they didn't make a big thing about it uh, in Japan so that you know she has you know she may have kind of she may just be living a nice can retirement he go to, you know? can he go to yuka or something like I just don't understand why I, he just needs a babysitter even he maybe or well. someone who's gonna yuka get... is an interesting I hadn't thought about that she I think that yuka could actually be quite good for him because she kind of has that let's cut through the BS remember with Jeremy when he was what was he doing at the Olympics when she like ripped it up and was like, just go out and skate. Remember, he was yeah. giving that whole. List. Well, I remember there was something at Skate Skate Canada too because he landed a beautiful quad in the short and then turned around and missed like the Lutz toe. And he and said he, that he hadn't practiced the transition enough. Yeah, and she literally looked at him like, "Are you kidding me with this?" <laughs> so one of the things talking to people who trained with him that you could did is that there was one year when when Jeremy was probably really under marked components and that's the whole thing with how they judge and they gave Ryan Bradley ridiculous scores when he can't really yeah, skate. Yeah, that was, when he's that was not, ridiculous. In right, 2011 Nationals, Right, yeah. which felt like it was payback because he didn't go to the Olympics. There were people that felt that he was better than Johnny again, which is like all like USFS politics stuff, right? And Jeremy should have gone to Worlds that year the, and the, how they judged the components was ridiculous. But she said to him, like, you would show up late, five minutes late on every session that you ever skated with us and think about you missed like a triple sow cow or something or he you know something easy and she was like think about if you had you know this stuff that you could have worked on in those five minutes that you missed times you know so many sessions a day to so many sessions a week to a, you know a year and she was like think about, you know and just gave like the blood you have that much more training to you yeah. yeah and i think maybe she could be Good for sure, because I think she's she's tough. That because do you think Sato. it's to Shoma isn't training enough, or do you I think he's I think not that's training smart? I feel like smart. he strikes me as a dedicated person. I wonder if he's not training smartly, but I think I feel like he's putting in the effort. I mean, Yamato seems like an interesting flower, right? Like intensity in a <laughs> seems intense. I don't know how. Yeah, deliberate and calm she is. Like Yuka has that, uh, like more of a Frank Carroll, like Zen kind Zen. of. Yeah, totally. I was even watching Michelle Kwan like 
cook, how she was explaining that she was like picking up that whole fish and moving. And I was like, Michelle Kwan is just very zen. Like she's just very like she's replicating that. Yeah, calm. And I'm like, right? you're picking up the whole fit. You know, and Michelle's just like, mm. <laughs> it would be like Julia Childs with the knives. You know, I was yeah. like, they're just there are certain people that are just like not intimidated, just gonna go, just do it. Yeah, okay. maybe you could, could be a good because I don't think a because yell, I, I don't think a yeah. And we never really necessary. understood what happened. We never understood yeah. if. It was the coaches saying, we've taught you all we can. It's that now was time my to do understanding it. of it, but they haven't really yeah. discussed it. It wasn't like a, and a, he wants to go back is kind of my understanding. But yeah, like, like at what point are they like, let we need to intervene and at least help him through this time and then we can reassess. But it's clear that something is very off in that situation. So And he's so special. I mean, the quad flip looked really good to me in the short, um, but it was... It was very scary. It was very masochistic to watch him go at it in the yeah. lawn. So. I, I don't know, like, not knowing what his problems are. And Alex said he's not, like, difficult to coach. Like, he's... I, he doesn't seem... Yeah. I mean, how would you know? But sometimes yeah. you do know. And he just seems such a... He takes his art form very seriously, I think. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, these programs are incredible. And the audience is still obsessed with him. They gave him such like an uproarious uh, ovation after his long and it was a disaster yeah if he goes to, he's beloved but if he goes to say if he went to yuka and yuka always is kind of like tiptoeing out of high level coaching but then you know you get a great japanese skater i think you could rope her back in but um i imagine that like you know alex is in chicago that's not that far away that would not be a bad uh, little situation there because he does seem like he needs a strong woman with him and it seems disorganized something is very disorganized about what's happening right now yeah and the fact that he was going for some of the the second triple axel after the first one i mean that i don't that was borderline masochistic that was yeah but determination very scary yeah very scary he it's needs, so beautiful. It's insane. He would do well with Tarasova. She would have. She would pick that out in a minute. Okay. She yeah. Would, she would have him there. She'd be cooking him the soup or whatever she's doing, and oh yeah, she would be all over him. She would have. And like, for all you know, I wonder if he wishes he had stayed with Atiri. But I don't. I mean, it seems like he, he made he that seemed, choice. I don't. Yeah, that that was. I don't get that vibe. Now. I'm sure that he could have yeah. gone back if he really wanted it. So. <laughs> But, uh, how about Nathan? Because this was interesting to me that because the, peop the skaters went from Skate America back home and then to France, and we really only have about five days of skating at home before they travel, this looked like a tired mess to me. <laughs> like, it just... This was, this was haphazard. Like, this could, this GOE situation... I mean, similar to last year, it was not his best performance, right? Yeah, but I felt like it was maybe, was it this sloppy? Yes. Okay. He was losing um, some of the quads at this point and then had to okay. work. Okay, so maybe this is a part of their thing and they know what's happening, but each one was pretty squirrely. But Raph, but <laughs> someone like Raphael. He seemed calm about it. Not pleased, though. Do you see the camera yeah. after the free? Someone like that, like a good Russian, is just not going to accept that kind of performance. Like they, yeah. even if they know that that is what's yeah. going to happen, like he did not look pleased with that. And that's when yeah. my NBC Gold was going out, and this performance was not giving me enough energy to warrant restarting it four times through the program. Right. So I had to go the VPN route because I just couldn't get through. I know, and then you never go back to exactly the same place, and then you're like, oh, am I watching this whole part again? Yes. <laughs> it just yeah. was not. The... But yeah. if you think about this logically, you go from Vegas when you're on a high, then your mind, body kind of goes down, and you try to get back. You try to, uh, you know, have classes, things like that. You're at Yale, and then to get going again... And then I think he had an interview where he said he only has like one free weekend in October. And I was like, what? Like this is, you imagine that, that's a lot going on for... Well, and maybe their plan was to optimize more the time between 
now and the Grand Prix final. I would imagine so. Which it's... does seem the right. Instead of, because, you know, would he rather be having competed at, let's say, it would never be NHK, but I think NHK is the last one and then go straight to the final, you yeah. know? And then, and I know maybe, hopefully Hubble and Donna, who were just giving the quote, but, you know, you have this amount of time built in to then peak for the final. It's actually kind of nice. I saw that article where it's... they were talking about, so now we're on a forced vacation. And I was like, maybe... Maybe not be on a vacation. <laughs> and I didn't know if they were just trying to talk a good game, but it's like, no, you should rethink those programs. Like, you are in trouble. In yeah. trouble. Like, you need to really <laughs> think about this. At least Nathan, knowing that he has this time to get ready for the final, I think that we'll see a much better performance later on. Um, yeah. But He'll was... need to give it, because this, this level of jumping in no way could ever match Hanyu. I, and I wonder, Hanyu has... <laughs> Maybe it's from watching too much uh, Yuri on Ice, but I kind of feel like Hanyu's going to go for the Grand Prix Final gold medal, and maybe Nathan is going for the World Championship. Maybe they'll split the big events this year. That would be exciting. Right. Nathan, uh, Yusu seems to show up for the Grand Prix, and that's one of the things yeah. that's really kind of exciting. Um, is that he's on a he's on a high right now, and Nathan did not back this up. I know that he has two world titles, but, and I expect him to do better at the final, but I kind of see, find myself like inching back being like, we'll see it when it happens. Right. Like he is. Yeah. Not... I, Cause I still feel like they're kind of at the point where regardless of who does what on the Grand Prix, I do feel like the final will be called in the moment. Yes. But you right know, where, now... so especially with some of the ladies, this momentum is very important. Who scored what, where, and who's doing what, when. I, I think more for Nathan and... Um... But this was not a good event for him. This feels like this yeah. is some more even with him and Hanyu yeah. now. Like, yeah. yes, he has those... I feel like Hanyu is turning the tide a bit. He has that willpower, yeah. right? To... Well, certainly in the quality. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's going to go a long way. So, and Nathan needs a new shirt. There was a lot of costume things with the the way the ice looked here and the whiteness of it and the boards that I thought that certain costumes did not pop. Nathan's really looked rough. Uh, yeah. And the yeah. French, when we get into the... even I like the costumes. Like on Instagram, I liked it. But when I saw it in person, I think that they need different colors for the rhythm dance. Oh, no, no. Wait, for which? The rhythm dance. The rhythm? No, no, they can't. They can't change one thing. It was they so can't. washed out. They looked so I know, washed out. I know, it's supposed to be. It's no, supposed to be. Oh it was my God. washed out on the ice and not giving the most, okay? Oh, I thought it was perfect. I thought no. it was perfect. But okay, we'll get there. We'll get I would there. go more <laughs> 80s with the colors, like a little of red, perhaps. or, or Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, see, no, that to me was quintessential, like right on it. Uh -uh. That was I think they need a little okay. more primary colors in there. I think, uh-uh. Uh, well, see, I, and I think of 80s as all pastels. It couldn't have been more... It's literally from a Jane Fonda, like, VHS. It is work. from a Jane Fonda, but I just... I don't think it works well against the ice. And this is okay. how we... Okay. You have to think about the background. Painting the picture. I'm for it. I'm for it. No. Mm -hmm. Washed one. out. Washed out. Uh-uh. So... <laughs> Um, He's washed up, which is what some of these performances were. Oh! Well. Hey. <laughs> Tomoki has got to figure... These packaging is not getting him where he needs to go. And that's tough. You know, I really thought he was a, a real proponent for the world team this year. And I think he solidified he that he is not. He still is. Think of Vincent Zoe is the biggest question mark ever. This is your time to strike. Yeah. This is your time. And he, you're... And, but he, he, I will always remember what Elvis was talking to you about when you're only given so many opportunities. And this, this was an opportunity to make a statement. And unfortunately, it went the other way for him. And it kind of squirrely jumps in general, even when they were working, they made me a little nervous. Uh, I know. And the, the costumes and ugh, both. The, that Harlequin thing, it was, that's a no-go for sure. And I didn't really understand the short. But... And his real stiff knees. Uh, he wasn't. He didn't have any speed out of the jumps. His wobbly ankles. Uh, this was not a good showing for him. No. No. Yeah. So uh, and Samarin, I know that he is. Where like, did that? Where did that short program come from? The best quad lutz and quad flip that we'd seen in a long time. And I thought, oh no, we are going to have to put up with him all season. I still think we uh, will. We will because. Um, the Lutz was be beautiful in the free. It was the flip that he faltered on. 
But I have to say, actually, his overall skating has improved slightly. It's it's less tough to watch. It's still not. I still am like kind of sitting through it, uh, but it used to be much more of a chore. Not my um, cup of tea. No, mine neither. Um, but with jumps at that difficult level and that quality, I don't know mm-hmm. what he's going to be around. Uh, but how about your boy Kevin Amos willing this performance out? Very yeah, charming. True. Still very French. Like, there'll be a beautiful moment, and then the skating will get sloppy, and then you'll have another beautiful picture, and the jump... Yeah, here, the, yeah. again, my favorite, I think, was his short program last year, where he had, like, the horns and stuff. But, um... I, it's, Everyone it's, else loved the Lighthouse program. Jonathan's like, no, I like the horns. That's very no, jolly. I like the one where he was, like, badass. <laughs> um... But here's the thing. I'm curious where you put his skating skills because I think there's a tremendous performance being given. I think there's definite dancing happening. Uh, But again, kind of a wild edge. Like a 7-5. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But that's... Remember the Ashley scores at the end of the components he gets more points for, but... If you're doing it properly. Yeah. Yeah. But knowing that they're probably going all the same, where do you put it? Like, where's the medium for you? Because where, how high would you go in those later marks? Well, I thought that his free was not as... Sylvia and John were very emotional this weekend. I don't know if they've been watching too many Lifetime movies or what was happening. No, I but there was like, are they going through the change? Like, what's happening? <laughs> They're like weeping often. I think because they don't have Vanessa and Morgan like winning the gold medals. They probably had the, the skater insecurity where they weren't sure about their own relevance anymore. And right. they were like having all the feelings and then... France turned People everything around. started doing well. Yeah, truly. Um, or Skate America started to. Yeah. I mean, I thought he did, a, he did a good job here, but he is capable of being more refined and really creating yeah. even more of a moment. So. But he does have an entertainment thing and an ability to sort of will out these jumps when they're not quite ideal. Are you getting uh, over that music for the free? I think I'm just over... You know, I think it's um, not the most he can give. I yeah. think it's a little too subtle for him, quite honestly. I think he needs... I think, like, the short to the question of you by Prince is, has more pizzazz to it. And I think Absolutely. he has more pizzazz than just skating while watching Grey's Anatomy levels of, like, depression. Yeah, like, I, it's a bit... He has more joy and X Factor to give in a more energetic kind of... He, has, life. he has kind of a um, a humor to him, that kind yeah. of lightness that can come out that is missing in that free. I, like, it worked before, but now I'm like... Mm, 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 yeah. Mm. It's like if I have to sit through that sound of silence by Aliyah one more time and just... <laughs> no, that I'll sit through. But um, also the idea that this felt like he just kind of made it happen. Yeah. He got by by the skin of his teeth. It makes me wonder what's going to happen for him next next time. It was a great, it was a very enjoyable thing to watch. It was like thrilling for him to get that medal. You know, it was like watching him on a roller coaster and the kiss and cry. Um, and that was some ugly crying. That was like some definite release of emotions that yes. he was feeling. Um, I so I wonder what's been happening in practice for have that because you must have had some self doubt before some rough practice. Or what kind of self infliction of pressure and obligation you had skating at home, or maybe you had really set that as a goal for some reason. But I mean, yeah. Shoma obviously helped him out. I can't imagine just as had. Just they could have anticipated had. Shoma having tanking like that. So um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It was, it was, and Morris, you know, Kivadish Feely keeps a little engine. He's at it. Yeah. Yeah. That quad style sometimes. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the dance because this was quite the interesting event. Yes, it was. The top seven did not change places from the free, but there was movement in the bottom three, which was interesting that they had movement, but... Well, and I'm intrigued who was as close as they were mm. in this one. Because I understand the, the placements made sense, but when you see how close some people were and how far apart others were... It, well, what's it interesting did... to me is I would say that, yeah, like between the, the top seven, there was a clear distinct, like a ranking, that the quality between the programs did I I'm imagine two and three were basically tied and right. I'm curious now, to get your take that. on that. so yeah. obviously an eye-catching point of view a uh, 
Chalk and Bates are better, right? Than Guinard and Fabri. They're they seem like they're very consistent skaters that Barbara really trains very hard. But Ice Dance is all about performance and star quality in addition to beautiful skating. And yes, they're good skaters, but they don't have that je ne sais quoi. Like they just don't they have They don't. They don't. And it's they're a, not it's ugly a... skaters. They're not bad skaters. They're not like they just don't have that special charisma, that special chemistry between them, that storytelling the extra flexibility there's no wow factor there they're just there was steady there was eddies. this sign in a practice room that, that used to say something like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard mm-hmm. and they are the quintessential hard working do everything you can within your power they are probably trained within an inch of their life their elements are so clearly and deliberately delivered yeah that they're always going to kind of accidentally be in the mix and you're rooting for them, but there is nothing inherently special about them. Yeah. Um, but yet they do everything within their power as sort of ordinary talents, if you will. And so they keep getting these these placements. But I thought it was a little alarming. Now, mind you, Chalk and Bates got literally no, 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 no for their key points Correct. in the rhythm dance. But um, And the Italians got all yeses. But again, I don't. And Barbara is very detail oriented about that. They are going to be precise, the Italians. And no, Patrice is detail oriented. It's not on the. And maybe it's because there are fewer teams, and I'm not sure. They have so many teams, and the way of the training with Barbara, whatever it is, but and these in particular seem to struggle. And when you know we've talked about Madison Chalk sometimes being on the flat edge and. Uh, we actually had Mark Hanready, we were asking him questions about uh, the rhythm dance and he did the video and he was talking about, you know, and in the third key point, there's a change of edge and it was like, oh, Madison did go to the flat. Evan, who's known for stuff, had an error as well. And it was like little things that you can fix, but the errors were there and it's a difficult pattern. And yeah. They skate and like games. you're saying, you're gonna Barbara's gonna make sure they do not lose any of those points. Yeah. Now they what's interesting is that they still showed good skating in their pattern and good edges and good performance. So they got decent GOE, which saves you when you are not getting uh, the key points. But they also lost Chalk and Bates got a level two in the diagonal step. Their twizzles were good. Their stationary lift was good. Um level three on on the Pia. So yeah, I don't, you know, the French only got like a two and a three. The French missed some levels too, but they got a level three on the pattern. You know, they've, they left the door open to go over 90 points in this right. program. And I think we'll see that later in the season. They couldn't go much higher in components. Um, the judges all going 9.5 and above for them throughout. And I would say they were clearly the class of the field. What the friends showed here, Papa, it was mature, confident skating with extra charisma, I think, in the rhythm dance. Um, I think it's just like one of those programs where it's next level. It's kind of similar to how Virtue and Moyer really hit that sweet spot when they did the Prince program. Like, it just has enough level of current <laughs> and, cla- and good skating and performance and it is one of those special programs. I imagine it will be their exhibition. So I would like to see Yeah, other... it becomes important. Yeah. It becomes important amidst the rest of the field when everyone is just doing kind of a basic Broadway thing, either classic sort of, you know, jazzy Broadway or some kind of like weird kitschy Halloween costume Broadway. All of a sudden we have people that it's like kind of appeals to high art and low art it's completely accessible, yet their commitment to it and detail around it is completely sophisticated. So it's like a win on all sides, and it's unique. And the fans are obsessed, because you know skating fans, especially yeah. in the U.S., love a musical. Um, so do it right, you know what I mean? And they they went all in. Yeah. I, and no apologies, and I think it, it's what makes I actually it. think it's a Gabby program. I think yeah. she is a star in it. The, she, yeah. Her embracing of this. The free dance is very them. So Mm -hmm. I think that if you like their skating, it is... Oh, here's the thing. I think the program is like high art in many ways, like the detail. 
I don't. You, the one thing if I read about it and then I was watching it here. You know that they never make eye contact until that one lift where it says the word eyes and she I, split yeah. their arm. That's the first time they right. ever look at each other. Like there are certain nuances to that in there where you're like appreciating it. But usually their free dances take you on an emotional journey. And I don't feel that this year. Oh my we- God, I feel it like crazy. I feel it for the exact reason you're saying it. Because they're talking about it loneliness. It is so and pretentious. But and I like it. Couple, and there is no eye contact. So it is lonely. And it's like two people just out there. And when she does that opening... Wait, hold on. I wrote it down. When she does the opening rotational lift. And she is... Uh, I don't mean this in like the Tara Kane way, but her body is almost lifeless <laughs> in that lift. As in, a, she's like given up in, and he's just taking her around and her body is limp in the lift. It's, I don't know, I think it's completely amazing. So I, I think it's completely amazing. I admire their program and I think that it's really sophisticated and like high art. And intellectually, I really like it. But you don't feel like each individual move has an emotional subtext underneath it? I feel like each grab of There is, of- and it's also gratuitously pretentious. Yeah, but how would it be gratuitous if I feel like it was actually emotionally motivated? The fact that you have that guy speaking like it's a commercial, like, it's a lot to take. <laughs> it is a French. Like, it is everything that the Canadians hate about them, like... Blech, vomiting all over why the are they why are they afraid to feel they it's not afraid <laughs> to feel the, do you know what gets me going the, michael mcdonald was over last night and we were showing him the french and then i put on tessa and scott he was attracted to that scott moyer and he was watching tessa pull out all those moves when she was getting all up in him around his body like yes like i very vegas very vegas not very vegas very yeah. like get me a room i don't know that moulin rouge in the moment i'm sorry that tessa has yeah. got like testosterone and hormones going at you like this free dance, second place in the free dance yeah mm, deserves to be first <laughs> but have to say you know what jane ron said she said that that Whatever the dress happened was from God. She said that was God writing. I know, you know, or, or or them just like being like, here's what we'll do. Here's how we'll solve this. Because you know, solved. when the free dance with Moonlight. So we'll give you this by throwing the the rhythm dance dress. So I ha- I and I loved them both that season, and I kid, but I I do love them, but I don't. Last year, I like felt that free dance by the end of the season. I feel like I feel this one more. I feel that there's... A- do you, so you think part of it, do you lack their... So your lack of connection that they're they, having with each needs, other... It's, really the, it's the fact that there's a lack of music for part of it, that the theme needs to be more... It could be enhanced. It's great. It's great skating. It's very pretentious. And See, I don't know why it's pretentious. You're I an opera it. singer, Jonathan, who talks know, all but about... So- <laughs> Yeah, but pretentious is to me how it's motivated. If it was for fancy's sake, if it was like you won't understand this and we don't want you to understand this because kind it's of. so high art. Which is but kind I of feel like it, But I feel like when they're on the nose and they're like, look me. Who are your favorite what, skaters? Me. I don't really have any. But I believe that because they're doing it in a non-skating way. They're doing it in a totally, I think this is very much, this is much more common in modern dance. I think we see programs like this all the time, don't you think? Like, could you see like people up there in spotlights with gloves, like doing those exact moves and talking about loneliness and forgetting memories? Like, that's a total thing you would see in that art form. So it makes total sense to me that that's where they're informing their opinion. I'm gonna drink this wine. <laughs> Katja gets it. Katja gets it. Katja loves them. Katja was talking up Tessa Virtue at the finale. Okay. She and Tessa and Virtue bond. They like the same kind of men. They're the whole deal. All right? So they both know the good taste of Marina Zueva and Marie Franz. They get it. Okay? The French, I love them. I, I love their material. You know, I've long been on this journey with them. Wait, both Katja and Tessa were at Olympics where sh- uh, long programs to Moonlight Sonata won. That they were. Of but that people... Uh, <laughs> but there was like... All right, let's 
this, I like the, like, I like the, I'm not connecting emotionally with it yet. It just didn't. Okay. Okay. I need something more. It got to the end and I was like. See, and I think the choreo dance lift to the end is packed full of like emotionally justified moves. Oh, that there's go. great moves. There's great skating. There's great but style. But I think it's like they're emotionally motivated moves. I don't think it's a move for a move's sake. I, I don't know. Like, do, do, do you think they're buying what they're selling? Or do you think they think it's... Oh, I think so, they're buying what they are selling. But, to me, that makes the difference. I think I think some of pretension for me comes when they know they're selling a, me a thing. But I feel like they're 100% in it. Oh, I think you can be pretentious and still believe in what you're doing. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> I don't know, I'm here for Don't all I'm... opera singers believe in what they're doing? Remember when we talked about the fact that that one guy who wanted to ask me out was saying that he had an assistant and kept using the word his assistant? I mean, your page turner when you're playing the organ. Like, he <sighs> sleeps on your floor and you keep being like, my assistant. I'm like, you're 30, you play in a church, and he is, you know... But what would you have called him? It was the fact that he wanted you to know that he was so important that he had an assistant. That's pretentious, Is that what you read Jonathan. from that, Dave? Let's that is what I read from that. Let's go it's there. like <laughs> when a young person tells you, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And you're like, do you think I'm twiddling my thumbs? Just yeah. who are you talking to? No, you're but audience. Isn't it interesting that you get a competitive response from these people? No, of it's not a competitive response. <laughs> it's that I see through it transparently and that they're trying okay. to elevate themselves But that's because you think you know you. their motivation. That's Sometimes it's easy. It's easy with Instagram. We can tell when people love themselves. Like, hardcore. Okay. okay. Hardcore. Okay. okay. So, just saying. But, <laughs> I don't connect with it as much emotionally. I'm just telling you. Do you connect with the chalk and baits? I'm excited by the chalk and baits. Do I connect? Is okay. it joy is an emotion? So yes, I feel joy yeah. when I like see Madison Chalk giving me sequins and Jenny Kirk razzle dazzle and a little mm -hmm. Jill Trenery action. Yes, you the know dress what I mean? looks funny. The and when I watched them, I was like. We've literally talked about the fact that Madison Chalk has this showgirl va va voom energy for years. Where the hell was Igor giving them Les Miserables, the, all American of the and that he gave yeah. us, the horrible programs that he gave them? And we've seen okay. that he can get evenly. She can act so well. She kind of skates on the flat of her plate. Done. No problem. Have her, have her in the air for the first 40 seconds of the program. Marie, Marie Franz is a genius. Win. <laughs> remember, she told, remember she told those people on Battle of the Blades? You're great actors. Just act. Just feel the wind through your hair. Well, Madison Chalk is doing both because I'll tell you what. So she starts, she looks like money. They go into the choreo spin move. It's brilliant. The curve lift. Her feet never touch the ground once. Does and she looks matter? incredible. She's... And it, it takes talent to hold these if lift positions like If you looked like, like that in hot pink sequins, I wouldn't care if you ever sang a note, Jonathan. I would be like, yeah. he is winning the opera competition. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. And, and she, but she holds herself in, in beautiful positions in these lifts. And that, She's and that. She's finally giving us down. what we wanted. Okay. The Elvis program. But she can give us more than other people can. Yeah. I'm sorry, the Kiss Me Kate program, the belly dancing program, where the ending was a little bit cleaned up, it was a little bit more fluid. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. I'm sorry, I know that Zach's mom told us in person once that she carries a concealed weapon, but Chalk and Bates are gonna win nationals, okay? The momentum is going that way. They have the likability factor with these programs. Do you do you have the ISU roster up for the Grand Prix? Who do they go against in their um, Don't think next, he, next? I will get it up. Just for you, Jonathan. We know how I love an unsolicited <laughs> question. All right? Yeah, exactly. Jonathan, what's your mother's middle name, and what does that um, translate to numerically? All right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, what do you think was she born on? What day of the week was your mother born on? And uh, 
what? <laughs> All right, so Chalk and Bates. No, because I think on their Instagram, it was implied. Are they back to back? All right, they go. Wait, I searched it the wrong way. I should have searched by the event and then... Their rotational lift, I, on a side note, is my favorite thing in the whole um, program. I just want them to have a different step. And the choreographic step... To me, like, like the just... choreographic nuances, even the posing and the pictures... And it's they're cleaning it up. I like. So they the go to they Cup get... of China next. They are against Hawaii so Baker. Week. They're against Hawaii and Baker. They're going to win. So my right. they're against Sinitsin and Katsalapov. They're going to win. Um, yeah. So they'll get another silver. Another silver. They'll make the final. Um, yeah. The Cana Danes will be there, so you'll be salivating all over your computer screen. They'll probably be third. You'll yeah. be like, I don't care. I'm. I hate Michael Bublé, but I love it when they skate to it because it was an honest intention. And I'll be like, really, girl? <laughs> no, Are you hot for him? Their in, no, their intention is to be sexy. And they're succeeding. It had nothing so, to do with that music. It was just like it didn't, it didn't. him and that well, sheer shirt. Well, I don't know. Shirt. It's powerful than music. And we've got my girl Swee competing next week. Like, that is... A, and Matueo Grauris. Woo! This event next week. He's back. Because we were worried about her. She's been off the ice for a bit. Oh, it's, it's, look, they're back. We've got Luba doing those lifts and that split on the ice. They're mm -hmm. doing just okay. I'm wondering how long Cup of China, when do you think, do you think the ISU, I think eventually they're going to have to give Korea a Grand Prix if that, if it keeps going as it does with them and what we have seen when they can sell out shows, it would be a smart business. Decision. Not that I think that the ISU is a smart business organization, but they will have to make a smart decision and probably give it to Korea eventually. Yeah, well, they make them start with a senior B or something? Maybe, but I think that they... Would they pull China or would they pull France? There seems to be, even though they probably should pull France, there's that old school... European mentality to ISU and Russia is almost considered its own thing, not European. So I have right. imagine maybe China would be but, the one. To but pull? France was in real tough financial straits. I so. know, but the ISU. But they seem to have hit a hit a stride with Grenoble because they just keep having it. There, How much so do you they're... trust Europeans in the ISU to vote together? I mean, come on, right. this is right. Well, because when Dagmar Lurs, Jonathan, Dagmar Lurs, that's all you need to know. Okay. Don't get me started from Dortmund. Oh my gosh, with their damn triple loop from the 1980 World Champions. And then who did Linda lose to? I don't even remember her name. Lovely right. girl, but you know, oh my goodness. Yeah, so. But, but why did China almost, or China, why did they withdraw from the last uh, season? Uh, that was they never, didn't specify, right? That was um, some sort of a, like a jockey thing going thing, on. Remember the judges were yeah. suspended and there was all sorts of. It was unclear. There was subtext there, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, that it was. A, they were making a point. I don't think it was a problem, and actually, uh, you know, the there's some things like, why did China lose the Grand Prix? Why did Michelle fire Frank? Why did Marina and Igor split? Um, did Raphael fire Ensu? You know, in skating, if we don't answer the question, people think you'll just forget. You know. You That's right. Have... That's right. Mm -hmm. Why did Michelle fire Frank? Every skater is alone on the ice. Christine Brennan, you're satisfied with that? Like, really? Yeah, exactly. You didn't do a little more digging? Like, come on. she wasn't asking about Trump then. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was still a character then. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Jimmy Kimmel video juxtaposing Trump and Obama and like whatever side you're on, just the that, different yeah. peed my pants. Like, couldn't yeah. what? Just funny video. It's a funny, funny video. video. Okay. Anyway. Have you ever looked at Marie Osmond's Instagram? You know, I can honestly say I have not. <laughs> so we were like talking about her yesterday, her whole group. And, you know, I think Marie's a good charismatic girl, but she was telling us to be happy with ourselves. And I was like, wait a second. I was just in Las Vegas for Skate America and across from Caesars Palace was the Flamingo Hotel. Marie Osmond was like 20 stories high with Donnie yeah, painted on the building. Her face, her face was epic. Her face with all the plastic surgery looking like Latoya Jackson on the front, like yeah. more plastic surgery than Latoya. And I was like, we're going to take- The spokesperson for Nutrisystem. Yeah, I was like, so yes, she's teaching us to lose weight, get plastic surgery, but saying that if you I love want to that, be, love the inner you. But if you yeah. want, love the inner you, and if you want to be happy, focus on the B. And I was like, pause. 
what? Like, yeah. Remember what when... makes her happy is to cash endorsement checks, and I, I don't blame her. <laughs> Keep pushing it. Keep I don't pushing pu- what you gotta push. Our friend the Schumans, I mean, they were they're behind Marie. They support all of it. Like I don't. Well, they said that their farewell tickets in Vegas were going for like a thousand apiece. You know that makes me happy too. If I were getting a thousand dollars per ticket. Right? I would be thrilled. But does anyone have that with Marie? I really think Marie is charismatic, but I think I like her best in small doses when I don't have to think about Marie that much. Because then I'm like, wait a second. She's like a great addition to a party. Were you ever that country in rock and roll? But you do seem fun, but I think you're crazy. And when you post a picture on your birthday of God saying, see you soon, it's not that I disagree, it just makes me uncomfortable. And it's so it is funny. That is funny. Funny or dark humor? Dark? Really? I, yeah, but she. I think she has a dark humor. Oh, she does. Kathy Griffin told us about to that. that. She wasn't yeah. wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kathy's yeah. dark herself, but you know that's. Yeah. But a hustler. So all right. Anyway, <laughs> in the dance, Madison Chalk is giving us all all the pictures. Yeah. All the the perfect music choice needs to get on the damn edge on that key point number three, but. I think that uh, they can do it. Marie Franz can look at it when they're not having 70 other teams. And the- Riddle me this, Adrian and Olivia or Jonathan and Tiffany? Adrian and Olivia. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I know you are like from the opera world where we have assistants and that we think that the French are maybe not pretentious, but Olivia Smart giving you that off the shoulder action is I everything. love it. I love it. If anything, I'm just too busy Tiffany looking and at Jonathan. Jonathan. He's giving me what I want. They're no. not giving me Wait, anything. Wait, excuse me. You're not watching Jonathan. Olivia Smart when they're skating? No, honey. No, no. Sorry. I'm watching Senor Diaz. <laughs> Eyes mm-hmm. on the star. And that is Olivia Smart. Okay? It, it's, it like, it's like when Amber Glenn is in a group and you need to pay. This is event television. <laughs> like, you know, it is like about Cup of to China. Go. You, come on. You must have manifested that. <laughs> you are, like, it is about to go down when Olivia Smart is doing anything. If she's having like these weird photo shoots where then Zach is on a motorcycle. Like Olivia Smart is running this shit and I am so fascinated by her. She is a, she is the most interesting person in that Gabois group. She, you know, I said that she belongs in the Pink Ladies. I think that yeah. she, she just has that real Rizzo energy to her. And I, She really does. She really does. Tell me about it, stud. All right? I think that she <laughs> is giving us the most this season. I don't care that I don't like that free dance at all. And bored. You know what? She gave us circles. And I don't know if Alexa and Chris watch Ice Dance, but I think that they should maybe change the music to the circles version rather than the naughty. And it's the same music, so it's not a big dramatic thing right. maybe they can borrow the cut but i because i was thinking about after ashley and tim were skating today that they need to they're skating to the same music and i actually think that that is not going to be like a battle of the carmen shady like exciting competition i think that it might just we might just get sick of the da 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 honestly honestly it won't matter either program unless someone starts landing something at some point i mean that's that's all we're going to be paying attention to rotate three jumps in the last thing i don't remember the last time i saw ashley kane rotate three triples i mean i gotta say i mean the the throws going here on the lutz but then she got it in the free but then missing the i mean it was just it was quite a mess. Quite a uh, mess. Yeah. So, would you... I, I, I think I their look is interesting. Seeing them at Skate America among everyone else. What about their look? They have... Because I think his body line to lift her, the muscle he's put on, has killed his line. I yeah, think it, from an aesthetic He's not as balletic as he was. And also, he's not calling upon it in this style of music or movement. I liked him better with with Didi. I think he was a much yes. more beautiful skater then. And I think that they have cut... Their deportment at that 14 Nationals was... It was like watching two people from the Kirov Ballet just kind of wander onto the ice. It really feels like in this partnership, his light is dimming to make her the star. Right. And I think he's the better skater. 
And I, oh, and, I think there's no question. But it was interesting. It's the because, Ashley Kane show. It is the Ashley and, Kane, like. And in the warm up, he did like a wonky jump and went over to them, and they completely ignore him, and they just watch her on the warm up ice. Like I think he's really kind of out there on his own. It's a rough thing. Like, it's a little bit yeah. awkward thing. It's like when she had the GoFundMe and then she got the brand new BMW and posted it on social media the next week. Like, it was like a little that, strange. That was like, tough. That was tough. Yeah. Um, and his think, fingers were even taped here. Yeah. So, but again, her errors, and they seem, they seem... So their problem, the lifts, did we've talked about it before. Remember, she feels tall shamed, but they don't. They don't nail the lifts, and that's the one thing. Haven, Denny. Their lifts are Haven insane. Denny's double X. So that was like spinning what on was the ice. That? That, I thought she was just doing a figure. I yeah. thought she was like a relative of the Hughes family. I don't know. That was some interesting <laughs> jump technique going on there with that double axle, that never yeah. gets called at nationals. But when you, in all seriousness, when you watch Ashley and Tim when they were giving the lifts, like they were, you know. Group five lift got a level three. They lose points for that. Um, a huge thud exit out of the lasso lift. They got a level two. Speed. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, I don't know what they got out of the death spiral. I can't read. Um, no, they did, they did okay on that for the forward inside. But just the overall GOE, I feel like they've hit a ceiling of like how far we are pushing this at the current moment. Do you think they could... Do you think they should change back to last year's? They need to change something. Like, they need to do something. See, to... and again, I don't think the program has anything to do with this. I think no. if she had if she had landed her jumps and landed the throws, I think they would have had both bronze medals, easy peasy, no problem. Right, but she often hasn't landed the side-by-side -side jumps, and the throws uh, have always had that wonky thing. Yeah, but, and real deep knee. At but the in a post-Olympic yeah. year, look, they let Megan and Eric win in a post-Olympic year, they, you can grit and make shit happen when other people are not on top of their game and they took advantage of that. And Megan and Eric nailed two years, you know, when other people were not. Yeah, I don't, because again, I don't know that the programs are why this The program's not interesting, but I don't think. Yeah, but neither was like the last, I mean, come on, neither were really the last year ones. They were kind of the same, just a different version of the same thing. Like, I think if had she just landed, they would have had the bronze both times. And so if they want. What was the whole deal that they were doing before they took the ice when he was doing that weird choreographic thing before I know, it's like a Russian ice stance, take the ice kind of thing. How from much the money are we paying Nina Mosher? And why are we. You want to talk that? about pretentious. Now, that seems pretentious to me because it doesn't seem genuine. It seems, it seems like they're doing a look me. at. Yeah, like a look at us. We are creating an important air about us. See, to me, like, that's oh. an eye roll. To me, that's like the... Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. <sighs> it's, there's a Corey Aid factor to the Kane camp in general, where we're like faking it till we make it, but yeah. it's a rough one. Um, yeah. Uh, the triple sow was a wreck in the, in the free. I just, I don't know. They've lost to Haven and Brandon twice. The USFS keeps going off of national results. They do like Kayla Duke a lot. So I do think that, that if anyone has the chance to be promoted to get to worlds. But they like Haven too. I know. And they've been consistent. But at what point do you look at it and go, the girl has no double axle or second jump whatsoever. And we're banking on a triple sow that's iffy. Right. But they do have the lifts and they have- But they do have the lifts and better throws and better components. I mean, yeah. it's tricky. Who would you send for the seconds? I mean, the worlds to keep- That's assuming them. Alexa and Chris do okay. Yeah, it's-, a, it's... I mean, I, I think there are three teams at play here. Yeah, and then you have to throw in Tara and Danny, Jessica and Brian. I mean, Jessica and Brian have those pants, but they've been very inconsistent. So, right. but they right. have the pants, and those make the people talk. And okay? they, they really do. They really do. It's like the so black eyed peas. They get the people going. Okay. Get the people talking, just as yeah. long as they're talking. <laughs> yes. Haven right. and Brandon, I mean, look at the, the GOE and their lifts. Like, that to me was. They're the, the most hairs looking. I, I mean, Ashley and Tim don't really kind of gel like a pair, and that's that thing we say Alexa and Chris just inherently have the most of. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but, but really, they, they look good in the lifts. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's intriguing. I, the music kind of started late for them. And the way the camera angle just showed him holding her in that position for kind of a long time. And long thought, time. Oh. Yeah, I thought, dear Lord. Um, but the throws were pretty good. Um, I mean, and their, their choreography is so unique and so interesting and sophisticated. So it's really, really nice. I'm intrigued by her air position in the throws. She almost holds her hands open in like jazz hands. Where like instead of the fists or instead of the flats or you know we see that do the Denny's love to... a jazz hand? I mean she's from the roller rink, remember? But remember Katie Denny saying, she's like, skating to Tosca with <laughs> jazz hands. Remember? Yeah, was... There she goes to murder her lover. It's like oh my gosh. So then all she's of a sudden, not the she greatest skater. Just... Her skating skills yeah. are not the best. They make it happen that Denny family. I but they're. There's like that Scrappy. Hughes family quality, that scrappy little engine that could thing going on. Right, right. Now, read me this, Jonathan, to yeah. steal one of your phrases. Uh, yeah. Pavlyuchenko and Koi Deacon. Yeah. I Koi hated Deacon. that program in person. Okay. What in the Sam hell is it about? Is it like a Tron movie type situation? Yeah, okay, big... wait, hold on. Here's what made the program work entirely for me this time. In the background, when they were showing the replays, when um, she fell on the flip, in the background, you see Kosternaya, step one, she's there watching from the sidelines. Step two, she's drinking a Capri Sun, like in the silver pouch. <laughs> step three, she doesn't giggle at the fall, but she is kind of like, oh shit. She makes like this very funny facial expression. Did you watch the Kosternaya? puff piece that Channel One put out in the latest Ateri propaganda, where... No! Kostranaya, what makes her unique is Jonathan, she loves horses. They have her riding that horse as if, like, she has all the free time in the world that we just, like... Yeah, she just, like, goes out and rides for hours We go to the barn. And you know the Russians are going to reply, she has lots of time to go on holiday and, like... Yeah, here's a picture of her horse from 2015. Yeah. Oh my God, can we get her like My Little Ponies? I don't know, like we need to do something, right? <laughs> I just think of Amazing. her like riding that horse. And then, she, down, of course. And then yeah. she said something that made me laugh so hard when she was like, so I think I'll be done with skating at 21. And it was like, 21, honey. Good you'll luck. Be, you'll yeah. be done in two years. Like you see those yeah. girls behind you, like don't get too comfortable, okay? Like, right? Maybe she means shows. <laughs> shows. Maybe she means... Battle of the Blades and St. Petersburg or something. <laughs> Listen, Sandra is doing it again, okay? There she goes. Listen, yeah. Ashley Wagner is working at Sandra's next event, Revolution on Ice, that she does with David oh. Wilson. The, the Spain, remember when Sandra was turned on by the flamenco dancers? Now we know that Ashley has like five moves of choreography that she puts on with different music. Well, she's about to get a sixth, because get ready. <laughs> if anyone can give her new choreography, it has got to be Sandra. We yeah. have got to... And she'll to cater see... it to her. She'll cater Do it to her. Do you notice on Ashley's Instagram, the longer that she doesn't follow Adam, the longer <laughs> that they don't follow each other. She's, like, lost all of her edge. The color palette has changed. I know that the same people that run Nastia as a pure run her social media, but she went from being this, like, kind of edgy girl to seeming kind Which of, work. like... That, that's what worked for her was the She end. kind of seems like moody with her cat and like the pastels. It's a strange thing. Sandra needs to give us the Ashley Baba Boom back, okay? Agreed, I just... agreed. That's her at her finest. Yes. The looks, the bitchiness, the edge, the... The sass, yeah. The sass, totally. come on. 100%. What was she I doing did. in Hawaii? What is she and Nastia talking about? You know, like... They were waiting for you. They were waiting at the yoga retreat. They were not, we missed them by a week. I mean, could you imagine? That would have, that would have been. <laughs> that would have been the opposite of relaxing though for you. <laughs> um, no, it would have been hysterical. Like, come okay. on. Okay. Some of us went to Austria, to uh, Hawaii to do things. Other people did to pose for photos on Instagram, Jonathan. Like, think about how weird that is. Like. Yeah. You could do a bit of both. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I did. But, like... Yeah, I mean, that's yin and yang, isn't it? <laughs> but, like, we weren't setting up photo shoots all day, right? Like, we just... 
we did things, Understood. and then it was like, oh, this yeah. would be a great photo. You lived it. You yeah. didn't need to record it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We Steve. weren't like posing for, I find the whole Instagram influencer culture just kind of strange. It certainly can be. And, uh, and One day, I want to grow up and sell hair bear guys. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is that? Weird. That's weird, is what it is. Are those medicinal? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> how come I can't um, find them in CBS? <laughs> like, what's going on? I don't... Can you? I don't, I don't think so. I haven't seen them. Uh, no. Anyway. But meanwhile, I don't know if it's a Tron thing or like a Matrix thing that they're doing... Um, but uh, I do like the one hand lift where he's like on the thigh and she's all turned around. That one's completely amazing. Um, I just don't and find I kind it. of identify with him. He kind of has a mom body. And I was like, I see. So you, they're buddy. Russian. So we expect some ballet influence because we know the Russians love to let us know that they are steeped in ballet history. But it doesn't look like it for them. Like, I don't know much about this coaching team. This coaching team is new to me. You know, that might be, um, there might be a reason for that, John. Yeah, they're not, they're not our usual suspects here, so. Um, the, the gold medalists uh, here. The, Pause. Should, uh, Can we go back, even though this is totally, like, out of context? We didn't talk about that Italian guy's hand. It was entirely covered in a plastic flipper. He looked like the penguin from Batman. Like, <laughs> like I was like, how are you doing an ice dance competition with this entire panel of plastic covering your hand like a mitten? It was phenomenal that he was able to do that. Okay, sorry, keep going. Well, Camille and Drew did a little bit better um, this week. Uh, Ziegler and Kiefer back. In yeah, Elam. wait, doesn't, doesn't Drew kind of look like a Canadian version of Buchan? A little bit, like they could be cousins? Think about it the next time you wait to see him. My Drew, my boyfriend Drew. You know I love him. He is such a pretty skater. They are, yeah. they are the definition to me, the quintessential. Of frustrating. Oh, I was going to say Canadian nice. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whereas they grew up in the sport of skating for years and years and years, and there's no bitchiness. How does yeah. that even happen? Well, it was even when we read this. This is a mark. sport that just attracts bitchiness, competitiveness, cutthroatness. Troubles. People are sorting out their stuff in this venue, and they seem very Then you well have adjusted. me and Drew, who are just like, so nice. Out there, yeah. So mm -hmm. Canadian, skating to those light lyrical ballads. You know, it's just... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Earth song. I think yeah. that they do want to save the earth when they're not doing their couples yoga. Ugh. Mm -hmm. So Mishnah Galiamov. They're going for the sow or their sow, um, which is impressive. It certainly didn't work, though, did it? Yeah. No, but we've seen it work better than it did here. Yeah. This was a rough pair event. The juju was off in this. After Shoma Uno, really the, Shoma, the juju in this event was like... I'm sorry, the French sad. Grand Prix has given us some of the darkest moments. I love the pretend... I know pretentious people love France, but this event, it's the one that has the weird times. They have to warm up at the ass crack of dawn. That's why the skaters don't love it, although they used to love the Crystal Trophy. As a viewer, I really liked this time schedule. Loved like it. it. Was, it was nice to watch this way, for sure. Loved it. Very convenient yeah. for my schedule. <laughs> for my viewing purposes. <laughs> I plan on finishing Tales of the City tonight, starting the morning show... We have, we save an hour. I'm going to Pilates tomorrow. I love it. I'm good with this event. You're okay? living your best life. That's what you're living doing. my best yeah. damn life. Okay. I don't have to do any stupid measurement course for work anymore that I was doing on Sundays. I am loving it. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't even understand what that means, but I'm glad you don't have to do it anymore. I'm doing it every Sunday night. All right. So I, okay. we're living the most, but this this, these Russian pair teams, they weren't giving it to us. I think that Sui is going to make pairs just wonderful and warm, and it's going to make yeah, we're missing excited some about life again. Yeah. People aren't going to be winning with side by side double sows. Like we're going to see some, we're going to see some yeah. pairs. After skating. how competitive Skate Canada kind of was in the Paris discipline, it was. But it, that there was a rough bit. competitiveness to it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So. I, not my favorite Moscovina team by any means who won, but Correct. yeah, she's still a genius. So what was your moment yeah. of the weekend, I have to say, of all of it? I mean, uh, it's really tough to say. I don't know. There's Costa and I drinking a Capri Sun in the background. That was a pretty amazing moment. I think I'm going to go with 
even despite his mess and despite his troubles, I will go with Shoma Uno's short program because mm. even though he belly flopped on the axle, I don't care what he's able to sell in those choreographic moments are, are transcendent to me. Let's see. I do like the Haven and Brandon Lion King, but I have to, I do the, the beginning of the French doing, and I can't figure out, is it from the TV show? It's not on the, it's not on the soundtrack to fame because I looked it up on iTunes and tried to find the, the soundtrack to the musical or to the movie. Are they separate? Like it could be additional incidental music. For right, one and I think them. Debbie Allen is doing it in the one clip at the one, two, three, stretch, one, two, three. <laughs> yes. Like that gives me the most. It was just, yeah. that is my moment of the week. I just, the opening choreography to that rhythm dance is short dance, original dance, um, original set pattern, whatever you want to call it. Life dance. Compulsory. <laughs> the shorter of the two programs that changes name and theme every freaking year, ISU. Right. I enjoyed that from the French. I was like, yes, that is where yeah. it was at. They got it. His twizzles when he go with arms, it was the smoothest thing. I was like, oh my God, it was just gorgeous skating. And Gabby save. She almost tripped on her back heel and stumbled and held it together. And I was like, that is a professional. Yeah. Mr. Debonair doing that axel. Same. Yes. Same thing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I loved it. So. And also, Deanna is competing at the sectionals in Quebec. Um, oh. With Maxim. And they got a 60. So that's improvement because they got... In their first event, they had a 48, which, you know, just had to eat her alive, knowing yeah, yeah, but knowing how easygoing she is, that they, you know, yeah, ended she's after super the music. Yeah, and loves the process, yeah. Loves the process, <laughs> feels really good about it, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, they got it together, she does the free program tomorrow. You know, she's a lot of intensity for Canadians, you know, they, they all yeah. still are like, well, you know how Scott Moyer is, but I think Canada... They're going to get behind this level of camp. Like, they're going to be like, well... They're going to have to. They're not going to have a choice, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to, like... They're going to start to embrace her like Caitlin Weaver. She's going to be yeah. very American. That Jeff Rohrer, who texts me when he... You know, when a Canadian wins, he's like, I don't know who that is. And I was like... What Bingo. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, yet you could tell me about, like, Evelyn and Trent. Really? Like... Come on. Come on. Come on, Jeff. Really? Yeah. You like every one of Alex Shibitani's photos. You can tell us about that. Like, let's get our priorities in order. We see you. We, we see, you. see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. We know what's going on here. So yeah, I have to say that was really my moment of the week. But this this and event, I one we have to watch the Dodds family at this Asian Trophy and. Um, rooting for them all of the dods hopefully we could have the dods versus dods i think australian nationals is going to be a blood bad. yes a bloodline blood, bad, a blood bad. <laughs> yeah, okay what was the year that brooklyn and kehlani had that like real bitter rivalry that i think that was yeah that was australian reason. it's while we were covering yeah yeah all right we'll hold an edge and look sexy bye guys bye guys